<laughs> let's begin. Let's begin with the first. Um, <laughs> see, the feeling of the Igbo, the uh, Biafrans, is understandable, but it's misplaced, in my view. It's misplaced. It's misplaced because, and this is where I still blame Ojuku. Ojuku should have uh, narrated the content of his midnight encounter with our law. Instead of saying all the time, you will notice that I have never, mm -hmm. I have never joined those who blame, this is what uh, Ojuku kept saying. Uh, you'll notice that I'm silent. I, I have refused to join those who try to blame Awolowo for this. And I said, that's not the issue. I want facts mm -hmm. at this stage. It's 40 years later. <laughs> Let's talk. But he wouldn't. And I wish Ojuku had narrated what was discussed and what was agreed. And I can tell you, uh, however, that when he told Awolowo that he was going to secede, Awolowo said, look, Give me two weeks' notice before you make that announcement. Give me, let, make sure that I have at least two weeks' notice. Ojuku did not give our law the two weeks' notice. Hmm. He announced the secession virtually before that team left the East. And absolutely, whatever our law, because I asked, asked our law, I said, why did you ask for two weeks? What did you have in mind? And he said, I won't tell you. He said, the only two people can tell you, and they won't tell you. Hmm. That is the discussion with our law. Hmm. So I think a lot of misjudgment is taking place <clears throat> uh, among the Igbo. And the Igbo forget that the quote-unquote army of occupation was very much deeply entrenched in the West. And therefore, there was a limitation on the freedom of action of the West during that period. Now, Aulo's conduct, uh, state based when he became minister, he was already minister on the federal side. I think he didn't have much choice mm -hmm. about once the war started, once the shooting started, and started before his own preparedness. Well, I don't know what you expected him to do. His business. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's all I can say. But in any case, that's Aulo, that's not, I wasn't the one who, who I wasn't the minister of, uh, on the federal side. Second one um, was, um, um, hmm? No, radio station was third. There, there's one in the middle. second. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, suicide. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, one does all kinds of things when one is younger. Um, <laughs> you won't catch me crossing the. You won't, you won't catch me crossing any battle lines at this at this stage of my existence. Um, well, you see, let's put it this way. Let's say that I missed um, Barry people and I went to visit them. <laughs> maybe to have maybe to have a chicken dinner with uh, the festival kibo. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it was just an idea that looked good at the time. And I, I, detail, I detailed it actually. In the man died. Uh, we agreed at a meeting in London that somebody had to go. Uh, Aminu was a northerner. In fact, he volunteered to go, but they would have killed him on the spot. Mm. And uh, so that that idea was shut down. And I volunteered to go. It just happened that way. Now, mm -hmm. your last question, don't you believe in Nigerian justice? I was acquitted. <laughs> I was tried and I was acquitted. What more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, next question. <laughs> <coughs> Wait a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Chairman, when do you want us to stop and take our break before... Chinua comes at 11.15 in 10 minutes? Yeah. 10 minutes, okay, good. Anyway, read my, the memoirs. You must set forth at dawn. Everything is confessed there. Uh, <laughs> but you won't, as we say in Yoruba, not from us, you go here say, polycap mouth bent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, my name is Jero Jero Um... We can't hear you, sir. More loudly, please speak. I say that I have read a lot of your works, and I, I am convinced that you are patriotic Nigeria. Actually, the Masoch issue is being held down by 
those who actually needed them. I knew the level of challenge and so and the suffering. The younger people want more, but the older people are the people who are holding them down for some good reason. One of them being that we are blamed that not a, enough time was given for dialogue. People were interested in shooting and so on. People were interested in going to some theorized, all kinds of theories and so on. How the old people come to violence and so on. So now, in addition to being a patriotic Nigerian, you are an influential person. A what? An influential person in Nigeria. Influential person in Nigeria. Yes. And uh, I'm beginning to wonder if. What happened? And so, by engaging any of the leaderships, now have uh, the uh, question of what is there? I've been uh, talking with them over some of these things. So, as to avoid another level of violence, what did you have? Just as you have indicated by the interview with the young man. The anger is still very deep. But we can take this thing out. And as somebody who is not you, whatever you say in that direction will have more impact. That's the suggestion. Would you like him to come? Yeah. Huh? Well, you see, first, the, the first thing is um, <laughs> um, you exaggerate, I think, my influential power. If I had that much influence, by now we'd be having a national conference. By now we'd be reviewing that objectionable and unacceptable constitution. You know that we worked, you know, a group got together and the PRONACO and produced a draft constitution which has been presented, you know, everywhere even handed to the embassies, the draft constitution for Nigerians to consider in place of this over-centralized and very unjust constitution which was imposed on the nation by the military. It is not a constitution, it's a military tract. And that is what has wasted so many years since we got rid of the most, you know, uh, monstrous uh, dictator, Sonia Bacha, We've wasted all those years simply because Obasanjo refused, refused to accept the necessity for Nigerians to sit down in freedom and decide their own future. So we've been treating this in a holistic manner. The issue, not just of Master Balloon, but of uh, the Ogoni people, the Delta region, uh, Dokubo, I mean, conversation with people like Dokubo, the Nobel Laureate Commission, has been to the uh, its advanced team, has been to the Delta region. I've intervened personally in the release, uh, which, uh, release of a number of uh, kidnapped uh, people. But you cannot treat the Nigerian situation piecemeal. It's got to be treated as a holistic problem, as an, an, as an entirety. And Obasanjo refused. He's my townsman, but he's an idiot. <laughs> you know? He's refused, both from private conversations, from public confrontations. <laughs> He's sent his police to tear gas me, you know, and this man whom I keep calling, oh, my good friend, Obasanjo, you know, with friends like that, you know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> so it's not that one doesn't, you know, make some kind of effort, but you exaggerate the power of influence. I will talk to Yaradua tomorrow. Uh, he's made uh, it clear that he wants us to meet and he wants us to talk, but I want him, first of all, to accept the fact that he's there illegitimately. Then we can talk. He was imposed by Obasanjo. He's a nice person. I'm, I, I really would love to sit down and talk to him. But he cannot say he's running a unity government because there is, it's not based on unity. It's based on, on thievery. I mean, stealing chickens is one thing. Stealing a whole nation is another. <laughs> it's a whole nation. Go in the pocket of one individual. Uh -huh. So we must still talk. I mean, yeah. 